In this video, we're taking a look at yet another really cool and really free plugin for your iPhone or iPad. This time, it's the very handy noise gate from Nembrini Audio. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome back to Studio Live. Today, we're here in the iPad looking at another very cool free plugin. This time, it's the Noise Gate by Nembrini Audio. And a Noise Gate is a great and handy tool because it helps you remove or reduce some of that background noise from things like guitars and vocals. So we're going to dive into GarageBand and give you a demo of it right now. So we're back here in GarageBand. I've created this song just to demo these plugins. That's just how much I care. So I've got a couple of guitars here. I've got a bass guitar, I've got my vocals, and I've got some drums. So we've got a nice five-piece band here rocking out at the moment. This song sounds a bit like this. Now, what you might be hearing, there's a couple of problems here. The vocals we'll get to in a moment. We'll give you a look at those. But we've got this guitar. Now, this is my lead guitar. If we come in here and solo this, take a listen to the noise we've got in the background. Not a lot of fun to listen to. So let's turn that up because we're going to zone in on that noise by using a noise gate. So let's hit the plugin, sorry, the mixer icon here in the top left. If you're on an iPhone and this is supported on iPhone, it'll be in the top right. And then we're going to tap on plugins and EQ. Now I've used the very cool Crunk V2. That's the amp simulator from Nembrini as well. And I've got a video all about that linked up there and in the description or at the end of this one, if you want to check out all about the amp sim. But for now, we're going to tap edit and we're going to hit the plus button, one of these blank slots. We're going to go audio unit extensions, scroll on down through my different plugins, go far too far down, come back up, and then we're going to tap on this one, the analog rack noise gate. So there it is. Now, I'm going to tap edit here. If you put it down the bottom here, one thing to keep in mind is a noise gate. It's a gate. You go through the gate before you go to other things. So always make sure your noise gate is as far to the top as possible. Now, you see there, if I try to put it right at the top, it won't let me because GarageBand has its own built-in noise gate, which may pose a question for you. Why would we be using this if we have one here in GarageBand? Well, I'm going to answer that too after I've given you a demo of the very cool Nembrini noise gate right now. So that is in, it's all good. We're gonna tap on the interface there and here we go. We've got two knobs here and two only, so it makes it super simple. We'll see our input over here, we'll see our output over here. The threshold tells the noise gate when it should kick in, kind of like a compressor. If you've ever used a compressor, the threshold will be set and that will be saying, are we, is the gate open? or closed. And if the gate's open, it's letting through your sound. If it's closed, it is cutting it off. The range, and this is the really cool part, the range tells us how much we want to turn it down. So the gate can be left kind of open, or it can be completely slammed shut so we're hearing nothing. And if we've got it all the way around here, it is shut. The more we bring it around here to the left, the more noise is actually going to get through. And that's key because often you don't want it to be completely off. You want it to just turn down and hone down some of those background noises that you don't want in your tracks. So now that we've explained that, let's jump in and take a listen to this track and play with the noise gate, see how we can improve it. So the method I use with a noise gate is I turn the range all the way around here to start with, and then I dial the threshold down. And what I'm gonna do is listen back to the audio, especially the parts where it's just the noise and no actual playing, and try and find the point here in the threshold where it's, just, it's bringing in enough of the noise, but it's actually cutting out, bringing the sound, cutting out the noise. So let's show you what I mean here. We'll hit play on this. Here's our track. <laughs> So that's about the spot. We'll just play this through again and take a listen and just make sure that it's not cutting off too much of the actual sound, but it's removing that noise. That's about right. Now, if so minus 77, if we dial this threshold around too far, take a listen to what's going to happen here. Nothing. You can see that there's input, but the threshold's up, so it's not coming through. If we bring it down... 
<laughs> only bringing through those louder sounds. So that's you know that if you're getting that choppy sound, your threshold has gone up too far. So we'll bring it back down to that sweet spot that we found around about there. Now, here's where the cool thing starts. You'll notice that it sounds really unnatural if we play this. <laughs> because it goes from having everything to nothing. So what we can do with this range knob is bring it down like this and then dial it up so that it's removing noise, but it's not sounding unnatural. So if we hit play again on this one. So that's sounding a bit good. I also think that my threshold might be a little bit too far up, so I'm just going to drop that down a bit. Yeah, so you need to play around with this to get it sounding exactly where you want to, just to balance out of that threshold and that range until you're removing enough noise, but not all the noise. So if we come back now, let's bring this back into our mix and see how it sounds. So yeah, we've probably still got a little bit too much noise in there, so we can come back here and we can adjust, add more range here, adjust the threshold. So remember, threshold is the point at which it cuts out the noise. Range is how much of that noise, how much it turns it down. The further around, the more noise that actually is turned down, and the further the threshold around, then the less is actually let through that gate. That is like the, the opening of the gate. So that is the noise gate. It's very simple, but very effective. Now I did mention about the garage Garage band noise gate. So let's jump in and take a look at this. Here's your problem with the garage band noise gate. It has one dial and it's threshold only. So if we were to turn this on, here's the problem. Let's replace this with this one. Now we've only got threshold. So if we try and do the same sort of thing here as we did before, we'll play this back. We've, we've got that problem where instead of having that range knob that lets us just turn it down a bit, it is either off or on. And that's the biggest problem with a very basic noise gate is that it sounds really artificial because there should be some background noise. You don't want to remove everything. You don't want loud and silent. You want loud and less loud when it's not playing. So that's why the noise gate here from Nembrini is so very cool. Now, before we finish off, I know that you probably want to see another way we can use this, and that is with vocals. So let's take a look at how we can use a noise gate on a vocal. And here's a vocal I prepared earlier. I recorded a very quick uh, bit of a fun vocal on this particular track. So I've soloed it here, and I've also used the built-in mic here and recorded it in this room, which has a bit of background noise and a bit of hiss and a few other things that are going to come into it. So if we hit play on this soloed, there's that background noise you can hear. I'm doing some breathing, which was deliberate just so that we can test this out. We're gonna rock this place like it's never been rocked before. So there you go. Now, the reason I kept all of this lead in is I wanted to show you how we can use the noise gate to reduce this noise when we're not singing. And you can think of a noise gate a bit like automation. If you've used volume automation, and I'll throw a video down the bottom in the description and at the end, so you can check that out. Volume automation, you manually turn the volume up and down. Well, a noise gate does that, but it does it automatically, which I think is pretty cool. So let's jump in and take a look at the noise gate that we have here. We once again need to dial the range around and then find our threshold, our, our happy medium of threshold. So I'm going to turn it on here. We're going to hit play. There you can see in our input that the noise is coming through. If we turn the threshold up, come back a bit actually, there's my breathing. And hear that part? You can hear it's cutting in and out. And using vocals and background noise like this is a great way, if you've got some background noise without you playing, it's a great way to set your noise gate because it's just the noise that you're hearing. So we'll play it again. You can see it's inputting there, but it's not coming through. If we go down, coming through, cutting off. And then when I'm breathing, it's actually even louder. So we probably need to come up even further. So here's this breathing section. You can see me breathing, but the threshold is high enough that it's off. And here comes the vocal. 
We're gonna rock this place like it's never been. So that's about the spot that we'll want to put the threshold. We don't want it too high because it'll cut off the start and ends of words. Anything that's too soft will actually be cut off. And now if we go back to this, this opening section, it's going to be completely silent. However, if we dial back the range, you're going to hear just a little bit of noise there now. You hear that? Just a little bit in there. <laughs> the problem is when I have that, that breath, because it just catches that breath, again, we probably need to put the threshold up a little bit more so that it's not going to bring that breath in. But again, it's a great way that we've got an automated way to remove this. So let's bring this vocal back into our mix. We'll play a little bit of this sound beforehand and see if we've done a decent job of gating off the noise on this vocal. <laughs> Not bad. Let's just play back this section here soloed and you'll hear this break in between because before we had a big big breath and big noise in between. Let's just play this part. Rock before. We're going to rock this place. So the gate's not so low that we don't hear that breath and it's unnatural and it cuts it off, but it is removing all the hiss and the background straight after that note. And in fact, if we want to hear this a bit better, I've realized we've got some effects on here. If we take the effects off here, we'll take uh, this off as well, the stereo delay, the tape delay. You're going to just hear me roar here now. But if we just play this part back again. Oh, we're going to rock. So you can really hear there, and the same here when we come in here, the, the background noise there, nothing at all there. A little bit when I breathe. We're gonna rock this place like it's never been rocked before. And you might even hear that in between some words there, it's cutting off a little bit. Let's play this again. We're gonna rock this place like... So between this and place, that it's sort of cutting out a little bit there. So that may be a sign that we need to come back here, drop our threshold a bit, maybe turn our range down to make it sound more natural. Remember, it's a constant swinging battle between making sure that you're removing the noise, but not removing so much noise that your vocal or, or your guitar is sounding unnatural. There you have it. There are two more videos about some other cool free plugins linked down below. I hope you found this interesting. And if you want to subscribe for more videos, click or tap on the Studio Live Today icon and I'll see you next time.